be humbled also by others which are which have a bigger knowledge of you. It's also important. This is this is I, I think in my personal point of view. This is the real rich approach in the interdisciplinary that makes you stronger and uh, let you penetrate deeper in the, in the, in the scientific reality. So can, can you express a parallel in, in art? Well, definitely. I mean, uh, I think all, all you artists here recognize the difficulty of humility. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, it's a real struggle. Um, and, to, and also objectivity, to have an objective understanding of what you're doing and understanding of, of existence. It's, it's a real challenge. But uh, humility is very, very important, I think. And uh, one of the best ways of, of, of developing that as an artist, I think, is to look at great masters and really great artists and see how they managed. And, and then to, to have the humility to learn from them. Uh, because I think uh, one, one of the big mistakes, I think, of, of the 20th century uh, is, is to kind of have the audacity to think that we can, we're, we're born geniuses. I know from my experience of art school in Dublin was that, you know, that once you go, once you enter the faculty of fine art, you're automatically a genius. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't buy it. And that's why I was kicked out of the department. <laughs> because I, I insisted on studying anatomy, insisted on studying great masters like Bernini and Michelangelo. So they kicked me out of the department. <laughs> Because I and I was kicked out by you know anyway I won't go any further into that but that's it, it, it is very sad and that there is there, there there is a tremendous lack of humility in contemporary art I personally think and I'm not talking about you guys I mean obviously I don't know you guys but there's in in the, in the approach to art I mean I think you know like in any other discipline I think every and it's it's a real threat I think to to the artistic vocation the artistic uh, profession is that you know when people come and ask me what do you do I said well, I'm an artist and they go oh you're a and then they might see your work and say oh you're a real artist you, you <laughs> and, and, and like why why should that happen I mean not say I'm, I'm a real artist but that's this, this is the reaction I get I'm using this as an illustration of the fact that there is a real threat to our profession that if we if we lose any form of uh, in most professions, I mean, a doctor has to have certificates. Uh, he has to, like, you're not going to get so, let somebody operate on your heart when he doesn't doesn't know your heart from your foot. Uh, you 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 want to know, you want to have confidence, and I know that if I continued even in, in that degree course in Ireland, if I continued doing that degree course, I knew what was coming out at the end, and I said I didn't want to produce that because I, I knew I knew those people, and, and they they learned very little through that course. I mean, that, that, that's just one course that I'm talking about. But, uh, so I, I wanted, I, I wanted to, to take responsibility uh, for my profession and to try and, and give, it, give it credence, give it, give it something substantial uh, so, that, so that people could depend on me to do things, so that I, I can actually serve society through my work. Uh, and one of the main services I believe, and this is all personal opinion, uh, the one of the main reasons, one of the main things that I believe uh, my vocation as an artist is, is to serve society through beauty. I mean, fundamentally, my vocation as an artist, I believe, is beauty, is the promotion of beauty, because beauty gives hope. And I think contemporary culture needs hope in, in bucket loads. <laughs> so I think beauty gives, uh, gives that hope. It gives people uh, a reason to live. I mean, even not just art, but even just physical beauty, a rose, uh, a beautiful animal, a beautiful wife, a beautiful husband, all these things, beautiful children, they give you a reason to live. Uh, and and we, we need hope. Uh, and, and I think the source, personally, my source of hope is my faith. So, and it's very difficult to, to, uh, to give hope without a belief in something. Now, I'm not saying, I'm saying all culture comes from a belief system. All culture comes from a belief, from a belief in something. So you look at all the cultures in history, they all come from a belief. And I think great culture comes from very interest, very strong beliefs. Uh, and that's where, where I'm coming from, uh, is that I like to, uh, to, to enhance my culture through, through what I understand. 
and give beauty through that hope. But that hope comes from a belief in, a belief in humanity, a belief in the purpose. And that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, that's open the very important questions on how the communication, the competition, uh, it's dealt in the scientific and artistic community. Let me say that uh, in the scientific community, the competition can be constructive or destructive. Okay, and uh, uh, let me say that uh, ambles, ambles comes from humus. Humus is is the ground, and the ground is uh, uh, the real. Uh, environment in which you find all the elements you need to grow. In other words, when Einstein discovered the laws of relativity, he didn't, he didn't invent anything. But also, 90% of the knowledge was there. The 90% of the knowledge was produced by his colleagues. And he, he was just a genius. He just made the little step that nobody was doing. But on the 90% of the of the knowledge, the humus, the ground, was already there. So when the problem is that when a scientist is doing something special, he believes uh, to be, you know, a real uh, piece of art, maybe. Um, the best, uh, uh, let's say, the best affair that someone can do is uh, to sell himself with a price that he need, he, he think to to to. Uh, to, to be the real one, you know. Uh, I think uh, everybody of us in science, uh, we are adding a little brick, a real little brick on the big knowledge that is done by others. And let me say that the best ideas that are coming from others, the best ideas are coming from others. And uh, we are just interpreting something and we are putting it together pieces. We are inventing a little piece which is Enormous, of course. If, if you put some zero, they are nothing. If you put one in front of them, it's a big number. Okay? So, but the zero must be there. So, the humility in this case, uh, it's, it's very important. Now, how is the competition uh, lived in a, in, a, in a scientific and artistic, uh, let's say? Well, let me say that uh, the best success that uh, a leader of a team can have is to make their collaborators to compete, okay, but uh, to, to make them grow throughout competitions. And the right competition is, uh, first of all, uh, I understand there are other people that are not thinking like me. I understand there are other people much better than me. I understand that I need them and uh, I'm able to push someone who is bigger than me. I'm leading a group, okay? And I think one of the biggest success, success, success of my groups are not publications, are not honors, are not congresses, are, it, it's to see people growing and to have tomorrow someone much better than me. I mean, that's the big success, success that I can have in my group, okay? So, I think that uh, in, in this case, okay, okay, is to transform the mechanism of competition in, in occasions of growth. It's fantastic, because that's why competition is what's for. I mean, competition is not for destruction. Okay, so now, to have this kind of growth, you must have, uh, in science, big communications, and, uh, and you must be rich by yourself. Otherwise, uh, if, you, if you are empty, your only values are the success, the honor, the power. I mean, that you are lost completely. You can be maybe someone which is very, very powerful, but when you die,